Alright, guys. Whoa, man. I have not even seen a mirror in, like, forever, so I'm looking a little crazy. We are at the horse clinic. So, whew. Sorry, I'm just trying to catch my breath. It's been a crazy day. Um, yeah, so... I figured first, before I started on all the stories, I'll give you a tour of the facilities. So here's the truck. In case you're wondering how she did, um, I don't know, she was kind of struggling a little bit when we were going like over 60 mile an hour. The tires are rated for 65, so it was going about 65 down the highway. And then the check engine light came on, so I'm like, oh my gosh! Hey guys, how you doing? Um, so I slowed down the check the engine light went back off again, so, um, I don't know if, I don't know. I do know that larger tires will make a truck work harder to rotate them, so that could be possibly part of the issue, because it didn't have that issue before pulling the trailer. <sighs> but, we made it down here. Hey guys, how you doing? So, we are not hooked up to because I'm too much of a cheapskate to pay $35 for a hookup. Well, I mean, the trailer's not done. So I didn't really see any reason justifying paying. Hey, Doug, I'm in Battle Creek. Wait, aren't I? I think I'm in Battle Creek. Yeah, I'm in Battle Creek. So this is the Battle Creek Hunt Club, and they are hosting the Warwick Schiller uh, Clinic presentation. 4.6 and 5.4. Uh, this is a 7.3 engine, so yeah, I am dog. I'm right out by you <laughs> Yeah, yep bigger tires and um, There is actually a shop that specializes in big lifted trucks in Grand Rapids somewhere So I might take this down there to them and see if they can look it over and see what it needs to Stay running smoothly. So here is the trailer so I thought that I would really do my best to kind of um, camp off grid, so to speak. The battery power in the camper is not working. We don't know why. Eric's got a buddy who does electrical, so we're going to have him come out and look at it. Because um, originally I was going to run off battery power so I could power the lights and pretty much just the lights. <laughs> and there's a plug in there too so I could charge my laptop. Hey, from Grand Rapids. Uh, Kosovo, wow. That is very early. <laughs> so, here is what we have. Let me flip the camera around here. We have our high tech um, cookie here. There's my little tiny griddle. So, it's like the size of my hand. So, I'm going to be cooking eggs. I actually heated water in there to make some coffee. And the, this is the turkey fryer. So,. Grand Rapids, Iowa, AC, I don't know if the AC, huh, yeah, it's too bad I don't have, I'm going to have to plug that in when we bring it home. I do want to see if the AC does work. I mean, it blows air, but I don't know if it gets cold. This is the inside. Um, we did dismantle a lot of stuff over winter, so it's going to look a little bit different. Um, we started ripping all the wall off, so that wall is actually, I think, going to stay. And then we have to finish putting um, insulation in some of these, more of the plywood, and then the official wood over top of it. So this whole area has been gutted. Yeah, and then uh, as we were pulling this off, because we had to get this foam stuff off and that ceiling, Eric discovered another leak from ages ago that had started and they never found it. So... That's what that is. So we're going to have to rip all of that out too. And then I think that ceiling is fine so that might stay. But we took this wall out. There were cabinets there. You can't remember the colors you picked? <laughs> well, funny, we couldn't remember exactly what we decided to do for the ceiling. So I'm going to have to go back and watch my videos because I think I discuss it. Uh, this is going to get reupholstered. I'm not sure if the foam is any good still. It's really gross. <laughs> But it's better to sit on than wood. Um, so as far as like trying to figure out this whole idea, I don't know yet what we're going to do with that. Yeah, well, yeah, exactly, go doggo. 
Go doggo. Um, yeah. So the battery's in here. That's our inverter. Everything, as far as, like, power-wise, is working on this. I just don't know why the power from here isn't going to, say, the electrical or the lights. But it does work if I plug it into the main power. So, we have... A <clears throat> I made a little saddle rack, just a temporary thing to stick my saddle on because I don't have a rack in the back. And uh, the back area, we never finished waterproofing the roof on the back part because we ran out of waterproofing material. <laughs> and we were short on time. And the main area we needed done was the living quarters. So I didn't want to put my tack in the back part of the horse trailer because it would get wet. And we've had some rain. So I've got my little tiny coolers. Oh, and well, I'm not sure how much rain. I don't think it gets that wet back there, Alan. But I mean, I don't want it getting dripped on. And it's the tack area. I'm not sure what part over the horses gets dripped on. Hey, Spruce Creek, how you doing? I've been doing okay. Um, so for food, I've got like I brought some chicken eggs to cook on the griddle. We got some buns because I was making cold cut sandwiches. Um, those were like pumpkin things. And of course, I brought pancake mix because you gotta have pancakes for breakfast. And maple syrup. This is actually last year's maple syrup, but I gotta eat it up anyway. So, and paper cookware stuff. I've got trail mix. Actually, I haven't hardly eaten anything because I've just been so stressed out. Coffee, which actually is supposed to go back up there. Water. And, uh, wind down. <laughs> Gonna have a lot of that tonight, I think. The air mattress. So, last night, okay, here's a funny story. I forgot to pack the pump for the air mattress. Even funnier is it actually comes with the pump, but it doesn't come with the batteries. <laughs> so, yeah. But, fortunately, I did have a pump in the truck that hooks to battery power so you can inflate your tires. So, I have a battery down here. So I connect it to the battery and I started to inflate this thing, but let me tell you, they are not designed to inflate inflatables. It was overheating bad, so I only got... It half full of air, so I slept on it last night, and it was like, I'm pretty sure I was touching the ground. <laughs> That's all right. So, yeah. So let's go on a little tour here. Yeah, it'll come together. I'm not too worried about it. I mean, it'd be sweet if I could have been camping in this, this weekend, but I did wash it, but it didn't do a very good job. Where is the horse? We are going to go see him quick. Oh, yeah. Lots of good stories on that one. All right, so here's the back. Now, I did try to use my Halo View cameras for this trip, and I was very excited to have them. There's the original Halo View camera up there, and then I connected one in back here. You're gonna love this. <laughs> This is total farm girl style using duct tape. And it was doing great. Except that uh, it got hot today, so it kind of started melting the <laughs> the tape. But it was sitting right here, but I couldn't get it con to connect to the main line. Um, I haven't run off battery power right now, so maybe they fell out. I don't know. I gotta test that some more. Flex seal works great. Um, I've heard people having issues with flex seal on the horse trailer roofs because it tends to get brittle on the sun but I don't know so that's where Moisey was um yeah so we had a heck of a time getting him to load in the trailer I had been practicing all week and he was doing very well but then the day we had to leave it took me probably three hours to get him in and finally Eric thought hey we should just put some uh corral panels behind him and just kind of like gently squeeze him in and it worked he went in I'm not sure how I'm gonna get him back in to go home but I'm hoping that he'll associate this with going home because he really hates it here <laughs> um <laughs> all right uh 
Yeah, I've never tried that. I heard it works on metal too. Things are as bad as we perceive them. Everything will be fine. Yes, this is true. And this is the problem that I'm having is that uh, like mentally, I've been working with Moisey for five years. And when he came to me, he was a very spooky horse. And I, I'd never seen a spooky horse before. So I was just kind of mystified. I'm like, okay, we'll do the normal thing. We'll take him slowly, let him get acclimated to stuff. But man, let me tell you, it just never seemed to get worse. I mean, it never seemed to get better. And uh, I mean, there were little things I was able to kind of work with him on, but five years later, I'm still not really riding him. I'm actually riding him less because he seems to be getting more angry. So um, with the Warwick Schiller new training method, he has his old training methods and then now he's got a new one, which focuses more on getting the horse to calm down and relax which is great for me too, because my stress level usually runs at a nine or a 10 most days, 10 being top. Although this thing at a 12, I was like, oh, pulling the trailer it was really bad. I was like scared to death, not because of pulling the trailer, but because there was a horse in the back that I didn't know if he was gonna be dead by the time I got there. Cause he was just not happy. So, Oh shoot, my comments just all disappeared. So there's a horse over here. He's not part of the clinic. He's just a just a boarding horse. This is an actual boarding facility, so they have other horses here. Um is he barn sour? Um he misses his pasture mate, the little mare that we have. And uh so he has issues calming down anyway. And I brought him here thinking that Warwick would have some sort of grand revelation to help him just like release it all. Cause I've seen so many videos of other horses at the clinics that just like lay down and went to sleep. And when they got up, they were better. So that really, that's what I was hoping for. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but um, you, I mean, I heard a lot of crazy stories happening at these horse clinics, but he told me that I need to start with some of these other training methods just to get his attention because Moisey was just running circles around me. So I think what he said was I need to work on my relationship with him and not focus so much on the training aspect. And I can see that. I can. But it's just... It's hard to know exactly which direction to go with him because he's so volatile. My mare, I can read her like, okay, yeah. She's saying that's that's too strong. I need to be more gentle or I need to teach her this way. So, but man, Moisey, uh, he wants to do well, but I just don't think, I don't know. So we're gonna go look in his barn over here. All right, let me turn this so you can watch his face. How are the kids around them? Oh, well, the kids are fine. Actually, the teenagers walked out into the pasture, I think a couple weeks ago, the horses were both laying down. And normally when they're laying down, if you walk up to them, they'll both jump up. But the kids walked out there and they scratched them and the horses didn't move. So, no, I'm not the first owner of the horse. Um, I bought him when he was five, and the guy bred him on his farm there. He was born there. He was a very old-school cowboy, and I could see he had some issues when the guy was riding him, but I didn't understand a spooky horse. It just wasn't in my horse vocabulary because none of my horses had ever been spooky. So I just assumed he was green. He needs a little more work. So that's what I started doing. I started doing groundwork, teaching him to lead, teaching him to follow my direction, but things just didn't get that much better. I mean, some things have, but yes. And who cares? This is exactly what happens. He will blow up from a rough hand. He will explode and he will rear and he will strike out. 
yeah. So you have to do is become the horse whisperer. Um, I don't know if he was heartbroken. I think he just, he really, really, really wants to be understood. And that's his whole thing. Oh, sorry. He's saying hi to you guys. Um, well, I don't know, because we're supposed to get Thunder and Lightning. Um, so, based on Warwick's suggestions, I took him out by the horse trailer. I was going to give him some nice calm time to just eat some grass and... Uh, his name is Moissanite, or Moisey for short. Oh, good boy. See, that's a good sign right there, the licking and the chewing. That's a calming. That's how they calm themselves. Also, yawning is another way they calm themselves. Good buddy. So, after the clinic, we walked around a little bit, and then I put him back in a stall, and he, like, seriously was ready to jump over that. I wouldn't be surprised if he did jump over that. Not that he's a jumper, but... Oh, I'm sorry, baby. You see how he turned his head away when I walked over to him? That's another stress indicator. So it's little things like that that I have to start noticing. Uh, he is, I think, 10. He's either 9 or 10, something like that. You want to cure it? So like I said, I've had him for five years. He was about five years old when I got him. Um, yeah. <laughs> So I took him out and I thought I'd walk him the same way that I just came up through those doors, down the pathway, and just relax, not ask him to do anything, just let him eat some grass and just give him scratches. And holy crap, man, he was freaking out. Oh my gosh, at one point he almost took off running right into the road. <sighs> so that's why I'm a little exhausted. Yeah, he's a good looking horse. He just, I just have to figure out his, his brain and I don't know if I can do it. Because at this point, he's got my brain scrambled now. Oh, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, you're not a happy boy. Um, He is supposedly half quarter horse, half Appaloosa. Um, I don't know if you, he's... He has high anxiety. I don't, I don't think I'd say Timon. Well, you, can, you can't eat my microphone. Um, he's not afraid to run you over. Um, cool calories are more for, um, helping them gain weight. Because we did have some cool calories for our other horse. Um, magnesium helps a lot. And then, oh, the poop mem. <laughs> yeah. Um, so he is on magnesium. He's getting about... I think I gave him like 8,000 milligrams of magnesium today. So it does help with like the extreme spooking, but yeah, it probably is. But it's just, he has a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety. Huh. Where'd your friend go? And it's actually kind of funny because the lady that's got the horse in this stall, she lives up in Stanwood and she's not very far from us. Hey, Randy, how you doing? Oh, okay. Protein fat? Oh, I'll have to look into that, uh, cowgirl. Yeah, yep, it's going to be positive. So I'm not sure. Yeah, he does need more groundwork, and that's what we've been doing. It's just pure groundwork with him. You can see that little vein popping on the side of his neck right there. That's another way he's calming down. The looking in the shoeing in that vein means he's kind of coming down. Did I ever get the feed checked out to make sure he... Make sure you said he was by you a year or two ago. Oh. Um, what I've been noticing is when he bites when he's extremely anxious because he can't talk, so that's his way of talking and saying, I am not in a good place right now. If I'm really upset, that's when he starts biting, especially. So um, I've been doing a lot more focus work and just kind of like interacting with him. And that has helped a lot with the biting. See, like right there, just gently touching his nose. That has helped him a lot. It's just kind of reestablishing a connection. He's actually being really good right now. I think I'm actually calming down just talking to you guys. <laughs> 
<sighs> so I would show you what the other horses look like being trained, but we're actually not allowed to videotape anything. Um, switching my camera. Ooh, I'm a crazy mess. So um, the reason being that if you don't have horses, I know this is going to be hard to understand, but there are a lot of critical people with horses. Any horse video you look at, there are probably 300 people saying how much the video is wrong and 300 people saying how much the video is right. So if Warwick had a lot of people putting little snippets of a horse being trained with no explanation behind it, then people are going to get the wrong impression about what's going on at the clinics. He is already on YouTube. You can look him up. Oh my goodness. Look at this. Look at that. Good boy. That's that's calming down a lot right there. Why couldn't you do that earlier? Huh? See the eyes rolling back in his head and the licking and the chewing. He's releasing all of his stress from today. And he had a lot of stress. Yeah, didn't you? Oh, baby. There you go. He's a good boy. You gonna say hi? You saying hi to all the people? So that's good. He hasn't done that all day. Yeah. Good boy. Um, round pen groundwork. Yeah, different girl. Bemmer therapy. I've not heard of that. Yeah, different horses need different actions, and that is correct. Like, what he needs is completely different than what I do with my mare. Like, with him, it's micro-touching, just because my, he's so sensitive to all of your emotions and your energy. That's that's the big thing that Warwick talks about is your internal energy and how you're conveying it to the horse. And he does read it, and that's my biggest issue is that I'm so focused in on trying to get, you know, all of the work done around the farm that it's hard for me to just take a breath and let it go and not project that that determined negative energy onto him. See? I'm still doing that. No, I can't videotape the training. I you can take pictures of it and I don't those horses aren't even in it anyway. Those are boarding horses. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think so. A salt lick. Oh, he does have a salt lick in his pasture. Um, I do have a bag of carrots here that he gets for, um, you know, doing well. He's doing really good right now. I think he likes talking with you guys. Focus equine supplements. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I, I believe that. That's definitely a different way of doing it, Garnet. Bemmer will relax him. Is that like a, a focusing or is that like a um, vitamin? Yeah, he is so calm now. Look at him. If he didn't have the cell door there, his head would be a lot lower. The lower their head, the more the endorphins rush down into it and they get a better release. <sighs> Clinton Anderson. I was just talking with another lady about that. His techniques are... Kind of more the opposite of Warwick's. He's more deliberate and more energetic and uh, more aggressive. So I have tried similar techniques on Moisey and it causes him to explode. And if he explodes, you can't, he will drag you across the pasture, blow out fences, all of that stuff. So with him, it's, it's very, very subtle, very gentle. John Lyons, I believe he is part of the horsemanship method that Warwick is following, I think. I don't know. Yeah, I am talking really calmly. <laughs> I'm trying to focus in. But, you know, the focus work, even if it's not helping him out 100%, it's helping me be more calm. Like, I still have a lot of stress, but it just helps me daily just to refocus my brain and focus on what I have to get done and not be so like, shh. 
He had a horse that was awesome after working him in the round pen for 15 minutes or more. Yeah. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what we're doing at the clinic is um so basically the technique I'm using with him is I'm redirecting his head back towards me. So like right now, if he were standing like this, I would wave a flag at his butt or in that vicinity and draw his head back up and draw his head back towards me. Because you want the horse to focus in on you and not whatever's out there. So, <sighs> yeah. Okay, so we'll take a little walk back through here. Hi, baby. I'm really hoping that he's going to trailer load okay on the way home. Hey, D. Yep, and the pony. <laughs> so, here's the barn. There's another horse. See, it's actually pretty quiet in here, and I'm not quite sure why. I guess all the horses are chilling. Like, one of these horses, I think it was him, was like screaming every time I went by. Uh, have I tried ponying him to another horse? He will ride out. Um, I did a trail ride with him a couple years ago, and he was the most perfect horse in the group, which was crazy to me. But, I don't know. I think, honestly, part of his anger is from... I'm not sure who did that. I think part of his anger is from not being ridden. He does... He really likes arena work, you know, when you're riding him. This is the arena that we've been working in. <sighs> yeah, this is kind of like my first main experience with a horse barn and it's really kind of depressing because the horses are like cooped up in these little stalls and it's dark and oh man, that would give me anxiety just being in that. So there's the arena. Hey Jerry. Yeah, he's a pretty boy. So it's a really nice area and they've got, I had been hoping to walk him down to that area. This is a hunt club, so they do like fox hunting. There's actually dogs like way back out there somewhere that you can hear sometime. Okay, yeah, I'll check them out. A couple of horses never dreamed of doing something like that. Yeah, well, I mean, I brought Moisey. This is my friend right here. She lives up in Stanwood. She's in the same clinic slot with me. But, Moisey pretty much uh, was just getting beyond my ability. I was, I have him enrolled in the, um, the online subscription program through Warwick Schiller. And there's so much useful information on that. It's like, it's crazy. So crazy. Like all the videos. But because there are so many videos, it can be overwhelming. And I think that's part of my problem is trying to pick and choose which training technique to use with him. So that's why I brought him here. And Warwick did show me some different things, but um, <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. Part of me is kind of thinking I should have brought my other horse, but you know, can you want to pick the one you're having the worst issue with, and it was him. So we'll see what happens. Um, as far as ponying Moisey out, um, he'll follow along other horses, but he'll still, he was having issues with spooking. Like at my house, he would spook. Like if a turkey jumped out, he'd spook and turn tail and run back to the house. And um, he was just always like high alert, which put me on high alert. Uh, what is he doing wrong? Um, pretty much, it's just, um, he's, he has high anxiety. So his brain, instead of, like, focusing on me and what I'm, you know, asking or not asking, he's, like, way out there, and you can't bring him back. So if he's way out there, then any little thing could happen, and he could run you over, he could take off running away. Um, if you have a horse, you want their energy, their focus to be on you at all times. It keeps you safe, it keeps them safe. You're a team. 
and it's hard to get Moisey to be focused in on you. Um, so the focus work, the original focus work I was doing with him was just teaching him to lower his head and lick and chew like you saw in the stable. And that was working really great with him. I could get him to do that in his pasture and outside the pasture. And if something crazy was going on, I could kind of refocus him back. But I think this was just like overload for him. And um, so pretty much what he did today was just try to take off bolting across the field. He did a little rearing up, um, running me over, that sort of thing. And it's hard in the moment to remember exactly what you're supposed to do if you're not, you know, if it's not something that happens all that often. <sighs> so I took a lot of notes today watching the other people um, do their clinic. Oh, <laughs> an Arabian. Arabians are high anxiety too. Yeah, exactly, Calvin. Yep, it's not a good feeling to have a ball of nerves under you. So that's why I stopped riding him. Because I was just at the point where I was doing like little bits of arena work. Teaching him to bend, teaching him to stop. Just, you know, really working on his cues. And he really liked it. He did. But then it just got to the point where he seemed like he was angry if I got on him. And so I thought, you know, he probably just needs more work on the ground. And yeah. So, tomorrow they're supposed to be riding. Today was groundwork day. Tomorrow they're supposed to be riding. I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be riding. Just just because he's already so high strung. Yeah, you and your horse need to click. Blinders during training. Well, I don't know. Um, we do click on occasion. But when his brain is way out... And another planet, I can't click with him because he doesn't want to participate with me. So when he does bring his attention back to me, it does click. And everything is great and it's flowing smoothly. But it's just, uh, <laughs> blinders. I probably need blinders because I'm the one I start to get anxious even if he's not doing anything. Um, and Warwick was talking about that too. Uh, don't be discouraged. You're trying to figure out as a team to work for his training. Yeah. Yep, that's exactly it. That I have to keep reminding myself and him that we're a team working together. And so we are actually right here on this hill right here. Um, the area by the horse trailers was where I had him. And I think a storm was starting to roll in. Obviously it didn't roll in because it's not raining. But he started like getting really antsy and really freaked out. So I'm like, all right, he's beyond what I can control. My nerves are out of my control, so I think I need to put him back. So I was going to take him up this hill here, which was the way I had taken him up last time. Unfortunately, the way I had brought him down was that dirt road right back there. So um, as soon as I changed gears and took him back down the road that we had came out on, uh, he was like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. And he wanted to work with me then. So that made me feel better. But it was just like... <sighs> Ketamine works wonders. Yeah, I would do a lot of lunging with him. Um, that's what I started... That's what I did last year before I started in on the Warwick Schiller program. Um, have I ever had vertebrae checked on him? Um, I did, well, I had the chiropractor video. And he did have a lot of stuff out of alignment. Um, I can probably have her out again to put him back in a place. Um, that's the tough thing, is that when, if you think about you guys, like, when you're driving in traffic, and you've got a really long traffic ride, like, you're stuck in Chicago traffic or something, you get really tense because it's stop and go and stop and go. And the guy keeps cutting you off and someone's tailgating you. By the time you get home, you are exhausted. And you're like kinked up and your back's all wonky because your nerves are pulling your vertebrae out of place. And so I think that's what's happening with him too with his vertebrae kind of being out of place. 
see how he stands on each foot to see if he has hip pains. You mean if he's like putting weight like evenly on all his feet? Can I have a horse tranquilizer? Uh, who is my chiropractor? Um, her name is Dr. Stacy. I don't know if she's out of Michigan. I think she's out of Lowell. She does people and horses. Yeah, I hate tailgaters too. Oh. Yeah. Um, patience and exposure to different things. Yep. So that's kind of what I had been doing with him before was ADHD horse. Yeah, he is kind of ADHD. Um, I would take him out. I think uh, before the clinic, I was able to walk him down the hill to the cow pasture and he wasn't all like spazzy. So that was good. But I think that's what we're going to continue to do. It's just little tiny walks. Yeah, the plastic bags. I, He's pretty good with plastic bags. He is not spooking as much as he used to. Really. Um, he's just now anxiety, I think. He's The focus work has really gotten him so much better just on his own in the pasture. Like before, if he was out in the pasture, his head would be up all the time. And he'd always be like, looking, looking. Like it was never down. It was always straight up. Which, you know, again, it pulls the vertebrae out of place. But then after I started doing the focus work way back in October, now he'll walk around the pasture with his head, like, almost dragging on the ground because he's just chill. So it has taught him how to um, check his emotions. Calm rider, calm horse. Yeah, that is exactly true. I am not that calm. How many years experience? Uh, I have six years, which is not a lot. You have three, you're old all around cowboy and horses, and they're all really great horses, but one is almost too broke. What do I do? Um, yeah, if you're saying if he's too broke, you might mean he, he's kind of like clocked out, like he's just running through the emotions and not really there. Um, Warwick does have videos on that too, where he talks about how some of his horses, and actually, he does. Um, raining competition raining that's what he does and he had one um, competition raining horse that was trained in everything could do everything perfectly but he just could not calm down he was just like wound up and closed off shut down every time he went to um, a show so we put him in the pasture and he didn't know what to do with him because none of his training techniques worked and then that's how this focus stuff came into gear was because um, he started messing around with him one day and the horse just like relaxed and it was kind of a revelation in his training he'll get grouchy if standing too long or favor a leg bye Kevin oh yeah I did have one um, that was for a nervous horse commies or something like that Xanax for me. I think I need like a heavy dose of wine before I start interacting with him. Just something to like dull my my nerves. <laughs> but it's hard because I'm like running around so much during the day. So it's like I can't like just knock myself out before I work with him and then have to go get kids because that would not be safe. <laughs> He does everything okay, but he's just kind of nervous when he's tied up to the trailers after roping on him. He's kind of lazy after everything. So yeah, he could probably um, benefit from some focus work. I think if you, um, you can go onto the Warwick Schiller website, warwickschiller.com, and they have like a 30 day free trial where you can watch some of the videos. Um, he also has a Facebook page, too, that you can join, but, I mean, it helps a lot of different stuff. Do I have aqua equine therapy? I'm not sure. <laughs> I have a pond. <laughs> Alan, can he hear good? Yeah, I would imagine he can hear pretty good, because he usually can hear me from quite a ways away, the dude. 
yeah that's kind of what i was trying to do today was spend more time with him um i was gonna sit in his stall earlier today but he was like trying to jump the wall so i was like this probably isn't safe so maybe after i'm done with you guys i'll go sit with him for a while and just kind of chill <laughs> every 30 minutes <laughs> oh boy i'd be getting some really interesting tractor work done then one quarter quarter horse three quarter arabian oh yeah yeah arabians are definitely handfuls i've had people that i know that have had arabians dr paul no i don't use dr paul for my vet i've had a hundred people probably ask me that and i for the longest time didn't know who he was until everyone's like he's got a show on animal planet or discovery or whatever it is um pro trainer i've had a couple of pro trainers out here and they all just kind of threw their hands up and said i don't know um so pretty much everyone said he's got kind of a mind of his own he's not your typical horse and they just were done so I just kind of started going off in my own way and found out that he really works off my energy and my emotions and really has to have a solid connection like he has to have a mental connection with you most horses they do their thing they're not really concerned about a mental focus I mean they like it better but hey Colin <sighs> might just be too spirited well he definitely can be spirited cutting crop circles in my field. <laughs> uh, Alan, yeah, I don't know. Thank you, Sean. What color are my eyes are blue, but you can't tell because of the sunlight. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about moving on with Moisey. I'm kind of considering it after today, but it's just, and it's not because he's, uh, those aren't, Pileateds. Those are actually frogs. Or toads or something like that. We have those at our house too. Um, it's just psychologically for me he's done a lot of damage to me. That's really hard for me to heal when he's still inflicting more psychological damage. And so just like bringing him down into this arena today, like I was shaking. Like even right now just thinking about it I'm shaking right now just but I don't have to drive anywhere tomorrow morning. My clinic's in the morning, so I could technically take a good swig of wine before I go. <laughs> yeah, that is that is true, Michael. That is true. And maybe I'm not the right person for him. I don't know. You know, I'll just have to... I'll just see what the summer brings. But I do need to put more focus in on my mare. Hey, Calvin! Uh, my mare is a good girl, so good, such a great horse, and I just need to get her broke out. I'd like to break her out and then ride her to my son's school and pick him up from school one day on the horse and ride back. I think that'd be cool. It's five o'clock summer, yeah. Do they get along with each other? Uh, my two horses, yeah, they get along, they love, they, uh, they're pals. I mean, Moisey tends to bully her because... You know, he's kind of possessive of me. If I come up to the pasture, then he sends the mare away because he wants time with me instead. So, yeah, I'm trying to be chin up. I'm going to go back through my notes. Wow, my nose is sunburned. Or that's a bug bite. I am so fried. Not that you can really tell, but like, it went from 50 degrees this morning to 80 degrees. <laughs> you have had a beautiful black and white paint that was basically the same way. I wasn't going to change anybody. Right. I agree. I don't want to beat it into him. I was talking with uh, my friend about that too. He won't, he won't tolerate anything being beaten into him. He won't. He's too, too sensitive. So it's going to be me working on my emotions, checking myself and I guess really making sure I'm well acquainted <clears throat> with the techniques that I need to be doing because when you're using your techniques and you know your techniques well it establishes more confidence in yourself and that projects back to the horse 
So, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yep. Where am I from? I'm from Michigan. The background was super relaxing. Well, if you think the background is relaxing, you should see what I'm looking at, because this is relaxing. I mean, you can't really get the full effect. But, I mean, it looks darker on camera, but it's just it's very tranquil. Just sitting here. I thought the Moisey was just sit here and enjoy just enjoy this, but he wasn't having it, so. So, anyway, I think I'm just going to go back and chill with him for a while, and <laughs> horses are just wonderful, Longheart. All right, Garnet, have a good weekend, too. Yeah, I don't remember what I was going to say. So, yeah, so I'm going to go chill him, maybe. <laughs> Give him some wine, have him some beer. Yeah, I do need some aloe vera, but I go back home tomorrow, so definitely keep me in your prayers for getting him back in the trailer. I'm hoping that he's going to say, heck yeah, get me in that thing now, I want to go home, but I don't know. So, we get a good night's sleep tonight, and uh, just focus on what we have tomorrow. So, anyway guys, thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to try and finish up. Oh, I haven't even started. I have a video on fertilizing the hay fields. I know back to tractor work. So I'll get that edited out. Probably won't be out till Monday if I'm lucky. So, forward hat. Yeah. All right, guys. Take care. Have a nice night and stay safe.